I'm curious to see how, um, like if we were to evaluate our like gratification diet on a yeah. day-to-day basis, how you would think video games fit into that diet when you did play video games. Because in my experience, video games are kind of like drugs in the sense where when you first start using drugs, let's say you just start using cocaine, right? You just do like a line or something. It's like, yeah. that's like your first experience. And maybe that might be the best, but chances are it's like the more you do a drug, the more you discover how to optimize the experience doing that drug. And therein lies this like growth in how much gratification you derive from it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think video games, because I remember, you know, when I first started playing, it was just like me alone, right? But I played this video game called Destiny. I don't know if you've um, ever I heard of it. I know of Destiny. Yeah, it's like a shooter multiplayer. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. so it's like, this is the best way for me to outline just how stimulating this game is. They have this thing called Trials of Osiris, right? So it's like three people versus three people. Mm-hmm. So a team of three versus a team of three in like a map, right? Just like yeah. Call of Duty. Um, and in Trials of Osiris, you have like a, a card and... Um, the whole point is to win nine games straight. Okay. So if you win one game, you play against other people that have also won one game. If you yeah. win eight games, you're playing against people that are also on that eight game win streak. Right. So increasing with each game that you win yeah. is like more and more adrenaline. Mm-hmm. And like, if you could just imagine what it's like to be one in the morning, you're playing on like a four sc- 4K screen with your yeah. buddies and you're on that eighth game with all that adrenaline pumping. You've been playing for yeah. four hours. You might've gone into like the sixth game and failed. And, like, your buddy just makes an insane play. Like, you and your other friend died. And it's kind of like rounds, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. it's elimination rounds. And you and your friend died, and the other guy killed the the three guys all by himself. Right. And you're just yelling on the microphone. I mean, to me, I don't know what it's like to be Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. But, like, (laughs) it's got to be comparable to that, right? Because it's kind of like modeling what it would be like to be an NFL player throughout that whole career. But turning into, like, a product that's digestible and, like, available to just, like, middle schoolers. Would you say, so it sounds like on some level there was something cool about that, but it sounds like, in your opinion, there was also something very negative about the way that was designed. You probably should have been been sleeping, right? It's kind of like when you watch uh, Wolf of Wall Street and, like, they first start doing quaaludes and and then they optimize for it. And then towards the end of the scene, it's just, like, the most insane experience. Yeah, I feel like that's where the slippery slope lies, and that just kind of, like, tarnishes your ability to delay gratification because if you have designed a way to get that amount of gratification on a daily basis right then doing something even minimally challenging like just writing an essay writing a paragraph is so challenging it like removes the ability for you to discover anything deep that you're passionate about you know it's funny like i'm growing up i remember if you had friends over and you were playing video games in front of them often the parent would say hey don't bring juan over here not let him play like give it to him right now like watching people play video games was supposed to be this like really rude thing and now twitch that is exactly what twitch is is watching other people play i i also think that i mean i know my household we didn't have cable um and even like with our basic tv my brother and i were very very regulated in what we were supposed to watch my dad openly had disdain for television right that was crap nothing good here whereas i think now I, I, just in what I observe with parents, the parents are, they're hooked too. Like they're not TV, but with smartphones. If you go to a restaurant, like kids are on smartphones, parents are on smartphones. I think it's a trip. You watch people pushing strollers and like, you know, messing up. Like to me, it's, I, I hate to sound like such a curmudgeon, but that to me, this looks, this looks dangerous. And I think this is setting a really bad precedent. Like mm-hmm. I worry that like remember during the pandemic i had this thought that like you know the way the way people were socializing was was on zoom on twitch remember there was like um clubhouse there was also like party house house party i didn't hear that one but and like those things were good at the time because it did give us outlets to hang out with people Mm -hmm. but i worry now that there's nowhere that's not commercially owned that we can hang out do you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. um that's my issue with online is like all of the all of the channels where we hang out with each other, our data's being mined. Uh, we're, we, we are, it's that whole thing. Like, Twitch is free, I think. Yeah, all you can pay and donate. Get okay, you can pay and donate, right? Yeah, you, but you, you I can, can get, get a subscription and remove ads. Um, but the, the idea that, you know, when something's free, you're not the customer, you're the product. Mm. And I, I, I worry about that. So you're saying, like, if the places we hang out are commercialized, then it sets up the wrong incentive structure for the people that manage that space. Right, and I'm mm-hmm. worried that nobody, I mean, there are free options, 
Like, we're not paying to be in here, not right now. Mm-hmm. Well, you sort of are. <laughs> You're a student. But, like, um, going to the park, uh, running around, right? Like, those are free options. And I, I think I worry that every single element of our life is monetized. Um, when did you get first? When did you first get social media? So I think I was probably your age, like 22 or so, 21 maybe. Okay. And, you know, there's been a whole evolution. There was one called Friendster. You probably haven't even heard of it. I've heard of it. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's very rudimentary. And then MySpace knocked that one out. And then Facebook knocked that one out. And then Instagram kind of knocked that one out. So, yeah, I think Friendster was the first one for me. Mm. Um, but these are all, this was, I mean, I didn't have any of these. I didn't have a smartphone until I was 26. Mm. Um, so it was, m- most of these things were experienced on computers. Was that when the iPhone first dropped, when you got a smartphone? iPhone first dropped in like 2009, I want to say. What was that like? 2008. I mean, it was this like earth shattering thing. And mm. um it was, okay, let me backtrack just to give context. In the like early 90s, cell phones were incredibly, these were luxury products. Mm-hmm. On the cover of E-40's first album, he's holding this huge brick phone. And it was like, the point is that's a luxury item. I remember walking around downtown SF with my parents and someone got out of a limo and they had one of these like, these cell phones were huge. And like these, these bricks and they pulled the antenna out. And I was like, what is that? So you had to call someone on a phone booth. Uh, well, yeah, back back then, yeah, okay. you had have a quarter. And so only rich people had them. Um, when the iPhone first dropped, it was similar because I think it was hella expensive at this point. Mm. Um, and if you saw someone with one, you knew, oh, like, that person's, that person's a baller. Um, and then, you know, now, now everybody has one. But it was a trip, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, having a web browser, uh, being able to, you know, apps where everybody had these weird apps. I remember there was like a make it rain app. Like they were sort of stupid ass. Like mm-hmm. they were just, there was a dollar bill on your screen and you just, <laughs> and then it showed your, your bill at the end. I mean, it was just like people were obsessed with apps. Like it didn't matter what it did. It was just like, oh, try all the apps out. And now it's like, I think we all use probably an average of four apps total. Mm-hmm. So it was, yeah, it was a trip. Mm-hmm. 